Well, good morning. <laughs> I'm not going to wait another hour and 11 minutes. I woke up before 2 o'clock this morning and uh, been wide awake since 2.22 two, two was the time that I, second time that I looked at the clock. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I'm up at uh, 3 o'clock and here I am at 3.33 and the title for this video is Why God? Why do you only allow free will to its violators? Hmm. I get criticized for questioning God, and some even see it as blasphemy, praying that I get punished for my insolence. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. I have been programmed to believe that there is a loving God who created all things. As I said before, a creator is always responsible for his or her creation. No exceptions. Why then should God get off the hook? Why is it unfair to question the creator of all that is? To me, being told repeatedly that this is a free will zone, it seems completely reasonable to ask why God only allows free will to those who violate that free will and not to those who oppose its violation. Yet that is exactly how it seems in the reality I witness every day. It brings tears to my eyes. It brings tears... Oh, I forgot the word eyes. That's what I paused for. It brings tears to my eyes to see the violation of human rights by the very people supposedly entrusted to protect those rights. It breaks my heart to witness violence against life itself. What is wrong? Why is it wrong to ask why the Creator allows such insanity in creation? <laughs> and I can't believe that I typed that without putting a word in that I actually said as I was typing, but it didn't show up there. I talked, I mentioned a book yesterday, Gentle Breeze of Jesus, and, it, and I, I didn't Google it prior to looking that up. It's a book that I read many years ago and actually it's a sequel to Like a Mighty Wind. And I bring them up at the beginning of this video for the simple reason that I want to make it very very clear that I am not putting down people of faith. Although you may think that I am. But what I'm doing is I'm doing what iconoclasts do. I'm breaking the idols. What are the idols, first of all? And we need to get this, I believe we need to get this very straight. It's an idol to have any God other than the creator of all that is. I believe that that's a truism. But there are many false gods that have taken on the role. I was even accused yesterday of claiming to be Jesus, which I've never done. I do claim that Christ or the divine is in all of us. All of creation, in fact. There's nothing in creation, there's nothing made by the creator, the initial creator, that is that the that does not contain the essence of the Creator. The Creator is all that is. That's my definition of God, all that is. But we live in a world where there have been many idols built up, many false gods built up. And these false gods appease the human ego, the undeveloped human ego that is unable to discern truth from fiction. And to me, the bottom line of that discernment is not some, something written in some book. It's something written inside of us. It's the new covenant. It's inside of us. And what's written inside of me is that I am part of, an, of a larger picture, the fabric of life itself. And so is everybody else, everything else, is all part of that same fabric of life. There is no separation. That's the lie. That there is a separate God somewhere. That's not part of creation. That there is a separate uh, 
truth that is not part of the truth that life is whole, that there is unity in life. But anyway, let me get back to the gentle breeze of Jesus and like a mighty wind. I didn't really, when I looked up, I just wanted to look it up and I've, uh, people in Indonesia found, I, if, I, if memory serves me correctly, and I did not go back and read anything on this, I just have a page right up now on the gentle breeze of Jesus. People found a part of, a, of the New Testament in their language. And this tribe of people in Indonesia started practicing what it said. They believed. They were true believers. They weren't indoctrinated by a religion. They just had a love affair with the Jesus that they read about. And because they did, they, they were able to do miracles, including, if I remember right, raising people from the dead. Now, the red dragon was raised from the dead according to what I've been told, what he has shared, and what others have shared about that experience, namely the ambassador. And I'm not putting down faith, but I'm looking at the world and I'm not calling it an illusion. It's a human experience. It's the experience of life on a planet that for all intents and purposes is insane a planet that is ruled by people who are the worst. I mean, they are the, it's like they dredged the bottom of the thing and got all the, the scum and all of the people that were the sickest and put them in charge of a planet. Now, somebody brought up the idea of egregore. And egregore, I didn't hear that term till I read the book Anastasia. And she was questioning why Jesus would have created such a powerful egregore. It's a thought form. Okay? In a sense, it's a false god. In a sense, it's, um, it's a demon. It's something that is created and becomes so powerful that it becomes a demon. And the demon is, here's discernment again. Does it feed the ego? which wants to divide and separate and control and dominate? Or does it feed the self, which wants to include and wants to heal and make whole, to empower, to enrich? Which does it feed? That's the discernment. It's not, is it written in some book? You don't get discernment from a book. You get discernment from common sense, from going within, from finding the Christ, the Buddhic nature within yourself, you get that from living and being in integrity to yourself. You don't spout off always, uh, you don't continue to spout off always what somebody else's faith was, what somebody else's beliefs were, what some doctrine or dogma is. This is the way we've been controlled by the egregore, by this thought form that creates a separate God. There is no separate God. Now you say, Ron, aren't you, aren't you praying and asking the Creator as if the Creator is separate? No. I'm talking to the Creator that is in me to bear witness inside of me and answer the questions inside of me as to why there seems to be such a dichotomy between the things that I've seen inside of myself the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. The, the government upon the shoulders of someone who does justice and, 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 and uh, rules, I don't even like that word, but leads with compassion. A, a leader that has wisdom, like Solomon did, okay? Who understands that you don't divide the child. You let the child live, even if it's with the wrong mother. You let the child live. Those that want to divide, those that want to kill, what spirit are they of? I don't look for the death of anyone. I look for the reconciliation of all things. 
to me that bore witness with my spirit that the ministry of Christ is the ministry of reconciliation. And he's in the world reconciling the world to himself. He's in the world. God so loved the world. He didn't try to destroy it. He didn't bring a sword to, 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 to do, divide it all over the place. That's the stuff that's been planted in the egregore, the thought form that creates dominance and creates slavery. God wants us liberated. God wants the debt removed. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God doesn't want interest charged. God doesn't want people loaning and, and, and creating a, a system of slavery by loaning things to people. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, shall men pour into your bosom. Okay, there are things in the Bible that I believe are true because they resonate with my spirit and because they promote unity. That which promotes division is not God. It's not the Creator, because the Creator is in all things. And God, Creator, why would that Creator war with itself? But I look at the world as above, so below. I look at the world, so I have to ask God, the Creator, why are you allowing the insanity? Why are you allowing this egregore, this thought form, called Christianity, called Islam, called Judaism, called Buddhism, called Hinduism. Go back ancient, 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 you know. Actually, I should have started with Islam since that's the newest of the five major world religions. In any case, why do you allow these things, these religions, that are supposed to be teaching us about you or about higher principles, why do you allow them to divide, to divide, to divide, to divide, to divide. Why? There's something wrong with that picture, God. I don't get it. I don't understand. And so I'm asking, why do you allow those to enslave people and get away with it? I mean, where is the justice in this? Where is the grace even in it? That's not grace. That's not grace. That's going along with the slavery. I agree with Aristo that sometimes I think that God is not a finished product and, and making God perfect is a tremendous prison on God. God is evolving with us. And so as we awaken and see the injustices in our hearts and souls cry out for justice, for peace, for an end to the, to the insanity of the worst people on the planet being in charge of the planet, being the rulers of the planet, dominating the planet, creating systems of slavery, systems of extortion. I mean, look at the world that we live in. Something has to give. If God, creator, doesn't hear me and doesn't choose to reason with me, I mean, it says in the Bible, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Okay, let's purify the impurities in me. I've said that numerous times as I sat in front of the fire in my atrium, or even sat before that in looking at my altar with the candles burning on my altar. God, purify that in me that is not pure. Transmute it, transform me. Transform me. Let me see wisdom. Let me know the truth that sets me free. Honor my free will. This is what I'm choosing, God. I'm choosing to go in a direction that I sense in my heart. All of my life, I've seen a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God, the kingdom of heaven on earth. I've seen that. I've described it differently based on where I was in the development of my consciousness, how much I awakened to things. I didn't always see the importance of unity as opposed to separation. I didn't see that. Separation is the tool, the schoolmaster, if you will, to bring us to a greater understanding of reality. It helps us to question, to take apart and analyze things. 
And so I'm questioning creation, or specifically, the creator of creation. And I'm asking that creator to grow up with me, not to be static, but to grow and to allow and to honor the growth that is in me and not just in me alone, but in so many of my brothers and sisters around the planet. I'm not putting down faith. People that believe have power. There is power in childlike faith, in, in, in belief that just simply accepts as true. There's power in that. So I don't put down the Gideon 300 or the, or the Red Dragon's vision of creating peace by implementing the tools that he finds in the Bible. I don't have the respect for the Bible that he does. And so it's not fair for me to mix with something that I don't believe in with all of my heart. Doesn't that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense to me. And so I ask God, and I, I wonder why I have this man who attended the recent Thursday class with the Red Dragon that I wasn't in, but it came and reported back to me that at least a couple of people were really upset with his prayer to curse me. And this is a person who claims to love God, and he's calling out a curse on somebody. I don't curse even the Illuminati. I only want the barbaric practices stopped. I only want the ignorance to, to end. I only want the financial tyranny and the enslavement of humanity to stop, the extortion to stop. I want there to be justice, justice that comes from the grace of God that shed abroad in my heart, in your heart, in the hearts of those that choose to love. Because love is my religion, not Christianity, not Islam, not Judaism, not, and again, I, <laughs> Buddhism, Hinduism. Hinduism is the oldest one. Judaism is probably the second oldest, then Buddhism, then Christianity, then Islam. That's the order in, that they developed. But I'm not any of those things, or I'm all of those things. Both are true. Both are true. I am all and none of the above. And so are you because we each contain everything. We are each perfect macrocosms of the mic or perfect microcosms of the macrocosm. It's a holographic universe. And I'm all about bringing the changes to pass that will enable us to be empowered, enriched, and set free. I'm here to proclaim the jubilee and to ask the creator in me the creator in you, the creator of all things, to stop the violations of free will on this planet called Earth, called Gaia. Thank you for listening. Namaste.